Thanks. I just wanted to ask you, what does it take to run a cutting room? It's a little bit like Kirk and Spock. I've got command. And the editor's like Spock. Where to, Captain? We're the ones with the pointy ears. We're the second in command. I need not explain my rationale to you or to any other member of this crew. We fill in all the details that the Kirk character, who is too busy saving the universe, we're the ones that thought out all the Vulcan mind stuff. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Danny Cooper. I am a feature film and television drama editor. I'm currently working on The Lost Flowers of Alice Hart, which is a mini series starring Sigourney Weaver. I've cut 27 features Jesus. during my career. Every now and again, I will dig into television drama if it's a good project. Interesting. I have 10 awards and 20 nominations, including an Emmy nomination for Battlestar Galactica in 2004. So suddenly I have a reputation to uphold. Very cool. So yeah, what does it take to run a cutting room? You need a very good and strong first assistant editor. I don't believe as a picture editor I work in isolation ever. I am as good as my team. First thing I will do is sit with my first assistant editor. We will work out what format we are shooting on, what frame rate we think we should be shooting at, what aspect ratio we're using, and then we will organize a Bible for post-production. That will be what the shooting crew refers to at all times. I can tell you one thing. We're going to need a green screen. And there will be a run sheet of how the dailies will be transferred, how they'll be processed, how they'll be transcoded, what format, what file size they will be. Then we will do a camera test. Scene three, ten, then we will five, workshop five, whether that works or not. Action. It's essentially always the same thing. So it's a very simple process. It just, there's lots of different ways of doing it. Is there any other positions, interns, PAs? If I'm on a big visual effects heavy show, I want a visual effects editor. It's really the best way to go. I always have a first assistant. If I can have a second assistant, that's wonderful too. So I was Miranda's second assistant, but her first assistant recently got promoted, and so now I'm the first. On a basic level, you need to be a good communicator. You're going to have to cut this. Why? Why? It's pornographic. I like to talk to the director on a daily basis, let them know how the dailies are going. I understand. But look at it. In terms of my crew, you become really close to them. Leave it in. You've got to be able to get on with those people. With remote editing, it's sort of slightly different now. I miss being in the room uh, with my assistants, but I have done a number of jobs now where they've been in remote locations. For example, on the show I'm on at the moment, I have one visual effects editor and assistant editor in Melbourne with us and two assistant editors in Sydney. We're all working remotely, but sometimes you really wish you could just walk into the room on one of the Sydney ones and say, hey, do it this way. But then you have to text and then it takes a little bit longer in terms of communication. Do you delegate to both assistant editors if you have a first and a second? So basically, if I hire a second, that second is working for the first. And if you mess up, my head is on the chopping block. I mean, I talk to them both, but I will always check in with the first assistant editor before I issue a command or an, a, a task to the second assistant okay. editor. How are their tasks split off or can it depends on? You do code. Do the code. It depends on the first. The first will hand the syncing to the second. The first will do all the management and the first will do most of the sound work for me. If time permits, I will hand out work to the first to edit. I can't. But that's how people learn. I'm not ready. I'm still a student. And that's how you can tell if someone's got talent as well. A very well-known editor once said to me, all ideas are my ideas. So if they have a great <laughs> idea, you want to use it. What, what did you do? Remember when Kennedy went down the line and he was accusing everyone of having a cold? He said, do you have it? Do you have it? Do yeah, you have yeah, it? Yeah. I cut that. Great. That's a great cut. I'm generally quite encouraging of anyone else's creativity. I mean, we're there to get a film cut and they're there to support the director and myself. It's a sort of old fashioned thing, but if you're in a room with a director and um, you've spent hours persuading them to remove something and an assistant comes in and says, oh, I missed that, you would rather they hadn't. This is of the utmost importance. You must be invisible. Do you understand? So I'm, mm. I teach my assistants to be room aware. I think being room aware is very, very important. Being aware of how to read a room and the dynamics in the room. That's what we have Tiffany for. Mm -mm, don't bring me into this. Also, loyalty is very important to me with an assistant editor. Because editors do say things in the heat of the moment because they're frustrated that it doesn't get repeated. With everybody, you've got to have people feel that they can say whatever they need to say and it doesn't get repeated outside the room. That sort of goes for editors as well, right? Like if a director sits there with talent or producers and they have a creative discussion. 
You kind of want to not get involved. Trying to shoot an intimate scene here. I don't need a lot of attention on set. Well, if you know a director who really, really wants something and you don't want it. No, God! You don't sort of voice in front of a producer that you've got an idea and you think it should be done like this. You go to the director privately. You never shame. Yeah. Or you might be wrong, too. You went there tomorrow and we get the hump, hump, hump. It'll get just what we've missed all along. You want footsteps. No, no, I think he wants a whole feeling. Yes. What do you think? I think I don't think we need it. It's very healthy to always have a fair degree of um, self-analysis in terms of your own input. I mean, and the more experienced you get, the more you believe you're right. But there's always a different way of looking at things and there's always a different way of doing things. I think your job as an editor is to be able to do whatever people think as well as possible. I know what I'm saying? I think so. <clears throat> pound, pound. But I mean, breathing too. Yes, heavy breathing and pounding. Okay, good. Let me but show that's you. that's why it hasn't been working. Yeah. Well, all right, well, we'll do it. Do you still, every now and then, find yourself in a position where you become the button pusher? Take that shot of uh, Reed with the revolver, just dump that, okay? Where suddenly the director takes over in that process of finding the cut. If someone starts saying, cut here, cut there, I will say, don't tell me where to cut. Tell me what you want to feel. If you tell me what you want to feel, I can work out how to make it for you. Have I disturbed you, brothers? Have I frightened you? What have you got to be frightened of? Grown men like you. When you work with a director for the second time, do you still do the kitchen sink version even if it's a second, third time director? Yes and no. I will remove things I don't think <laughs> need to be in the show if I really feel strongly about it before I present an edit for the first time, the editor's cut, let's call it. Now play the blasted scene. If it's a feature film, I would put everything the director had shot on the screen. On a television show, because you have a finite amount of time or less time, I will probably make shortcuts as I'm going. For example, if I feel like a line is repeated three times, I'll just remove and keep going. If I can see a solution to a problem, I'll put that into that cut. Make sure it's got music and sound and that it plays well. I'll try to present a cut that screens that's a strong cut. Do you think it's good when a director shoots and then goes on vacation and you cut by yourself for a while? Or do you like the director be there early as you're sort of cutting scenes? In my experience, there's a purity that comes in from the first cut, that the editor is responding directly to that material, and there's an honesty to that first cut. By the state of New York, I now pronounce you deceased. So I quite like doing a cut on my own first. Amen. I want to drill a little deeper on etiquette in the cutting room. All right, Miss Vivian, one more time. Dinner napkin. Dinner napkin. Good. Don't slouch. Will you have a meeting where you talk about etiquette or it's just understood? If I'm training up a new assistant, I will have that conversation. But I won't make a big deal out of it. I'll just let it slip into a conversation that honesty, integrity, attention to detail, always check your work and then check your work again and then check your work again. Always watch the cut before you send it out. Let's say your new assistant editor does make mistakes. I, I'm sorry I'm late, Dr. Khan. There is How do you a, handle that? I, I'm willing to make it up to you, and I promise it won't happen again. Everyone makes errors. I explain the mistake, and then I explain the value of triple checking. I, I'll, I'll do better, I promise. I might get frustrated, and I might get stressed, but I will never get angry at an assistant. They're obviously trying to do the best they can. Someone who is willing to take responsibility. Have you been in that situation where you feel like it's really hard to get to the quality that you expect? If you find a talented assistant editor, you hold on to them. Get the fuck out of here, get but it's nobody's fault if they don't have that innate talent. We both have a lot to learn. You can develop talent, but you either have it or you haven't. Thank you. Well, you know. The first film I ever edited, I'd never really edited before, and I just edited it. And you learn how to edit as you're editing, and you learn how to edit as you do more and more jobs. But you have something to start with. And maybe it's an understanding of rhythm or performance or nuance or shaping. You have that naturally and a good assistant editor will also have that maybe not as developed but they will have it as much as take press when you hire new people what are you watching for i will ask them about their level of experience i will talk about how i like my cutting room set up i will talk a little bit about protocol i will ask them about their visual effects experience i will ask them whether they like doing sound editing or not look i do my own music editing if i don't have a music editor but the sound editing 
I don't really want to do things like cut punches. It's time consuming. I want someone else to do that and I wanted them to do it well. And it's very uh, gratifying to see someone do sound work on your edits and bring it up the 70% that it comes up when the sound edit is done well. <laughs> reminds me of my first editing job, James Cameron, Ghost of the Abyss. So we would work endlessly on sound together, where he would only give me direction on sound, nothing else. Really, really eye-opening. And what it makes you very aware of is that a picture editor is not just a person that cuts pictures. A picture editor is a person who can envision all those layers, the music, the sound, the whole thing. I kind of want to talk a little bit more about the politics in the room. How do you handle situations where things are just not going well? I see a lot of glum, glum faces now. Please don't be disconsolate. This is this is politics. Well, if the room's not going well, the first thing I try to do is not make it all about me. You're a fucking miserable drunk. Because that's yeah. very easy if a room's not going well to become acutely paranoid. First of all, I try to lighten how everyone's feeling in the room. You know, I tell jokes if I have to. <laughs> you know, if I just try and lighten the mood, I will try and work out what the problem might be. And sometimes the problem is nothing to do with you, you see. And sometimes the problem is nothing to do with the show either to do with something else entirely. If the problem's to do with the film, I quite often will say, let's sleep on it. It always looks different in the morning. I can fix this whole thing in the edit. One thing I do when I screen scenes for the director is I step away and I sit behind them. So I just want them in the screen and I can even pick up their body language without them noticing. I tend to sit with them and watch okay. it with them. I haven't had that experience of watching them watch the film, but I will do that if I'm screening in a cinema. I will sit behind the audience and watch the audience watch the film. But if it's in my room, I tend to sit with them. So if you're working with a director for the first time, you know why you're hired. How do you establish communication and goodwill with that director? Well, normally what I say when I first meet them is I want an open, ego-free relationship. So I want to be able to talk to you about how I feel about the material. And I want you to be able to talk to me about how you feel about the edits. I mean, you're there to create a film for this and with this person. I mean, the real reason I got into editing because it's such an amazing relationship with someone where you're making something together. That's when it gets to be fantastic. But and the director has brought a particular vision to that. Visions are worth fighting for. The relationship between the editor and the director, that's the most thrilling part of editing. This is the best work we've ever done. It's a real film, Jack. It feels good. Yeah.